interrupt this program to bring you a special bulletin. Three shots were fired at the president's motorcade. And there was a bang. We believe it was a shot. But President Kennedy is dead. Hello and welcome to a special edition of Press Party for the 50th anniversary of John F. Kennedy's death. We're talking about the media coverage then and now. Half a century ago, the 35th president was shot dead in Dallas, Texas. Journalists began reporting on the story of their lives. This year, you can escape the anniversary coverage, documentaries, never seen before footage, and new conspiracy theories. Plus, the image of an idyllic family and perfect president has dropped in the last 50 years. We'll talk about how news reports and books fueled the fall. Now let's introduce our panelists. We have Dr. Bob Rosenthal, the chair of Suffolk University's Communication and Journalism Department. Joining us, we have Phil Johnston. He is a former chair of the Massachusetts Je Democratic Party. And Marjorie Egan joins us. She's a columnist for the Boston Herald. Thanks for joining us on Press Party. We'll never forget those days in Dallas from November of 1963. The death of President Kennedy and then the shooting of Lee Harvey Oswald changed the way media covers major news. 75-year-old Bill Lord was a young producer back then. His routine assignment changed his career forever. So I looked around and said, where is Dealey Plaza? And they said, it's only two blocks away. The city of Dallas. 1230, November 22nd, 1963. ABC News producer Bill Lord began reporting on the story of a lifetime. I was a 25-year-old uh, from Saco, Maine, who was caught in the headlights of history. He grabbed a cameraman and ran to Dealey Plaza just as police were looking at the textbook depository building for the alleged shooter. There were many witnesses to the assassination. That's me. A little more hair, a right little less weight. Friday afternoon put in motion many sleepless nights for Lord. At midnight, the media talked to Lee Harvey Oswald in the basement of the Dallas police station. It was a scene that would never be repeated again because at that point, we really were compromising the uh, judicial process. Lord's big moment came on Sunday when detectives were transferring Oswald to the county jail. He was the backup reporter for ABC News on a phone attached to the wall with a foot-long cord. So I saw Oswald come out of the elevator. He then went out of my line of sight and headed toward the uh, car, and then I heard a shot. Apparently, Oswald was shot by a small, elderly man. I'm about uh, 20 feet away from apparently where Oswald is. He, what was feared might happen actually apparently has happened here in Dallas. Oswald is shot, according to a police spokesman. That was the moment when Bill Lord told the nation Kennedy's assassin was down. That isn't happening again. The, the press is never going to be, the press doesn't want to be put in that position. Reporting for Press Party, I'm Katie Eastman. So this event catapulted Bill Lord's career. He was a 25-year-old, and then he became the executive producer of Good Morning America, Nightline, and World News. What do you guys remember from that day watching the media then? Well, what I remember is, is I was a kid, so what I remember is that because there was no Nickelodeon or there were no computers or there were no games to play when you were a kid, you sat in the room with your parents watching this whole thing unfold on television. It was like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then the funeral on Monday. I was nine years old in this room with the shades down watching this whole thing for days. I mean, obviously, you're not ever going to get as close <coughs> as, as he got to that whole situation. They would keep you far away, but it was different now. I kept thinking, if this happened today, um, you'd shield your kids. You know, you probably, as, as you would with young kids, if they were too young, but it was a family event because it was one TV in the house. Mm -hmm. It was all black and white. You either listened to uh, Walter Cronkite or you listened to David Brinkley or you listened mm -hmm. to, I think Harry Reason was around then. Yes, he was. He? Even as a nine-year-old, you remember these names. Oh. You remember what that looked like on the news. Well, I just remember because your parents were so upset. I mean, I'm Irish. I'm Catholic. I grew up in Fall River. We spent summers down the Cape. We would, you know, run over to Davis <coughs> Port to try to see Jacqueline Kennedy jogging in the golf course. So we were Kennedy groupies, my whole family. Right. And so it was a very big deal um, Phil, when he died. You were a little bit older. You were in college. Sorry to <laughs> Marjorie, Marjorie was a youngin. Yeah, I was a youngin. Mm. I was right. older. Still am. So what was it like for you do, watching the media? I was at UMass Amherst, and uh, the president came to uh, dedicate the Robert Frost Library four weeks before his death at Amherst College. And my roommate and I were fanatical 
and remain fanatical Democrats and uh, Kennedy people. Yes, Dr. Bob, yeah. you were 12 years old. Yes. Tell me about what you remember from the media coverage that day and how it would be different today. Well, I, I remember very vividly. I was in sixth grade and walking home, everybody had pulled their cars over to the side of the sidewalk and were listening to the radio. Uh, and as soon as I got home, my grandmother, who was taking care of us, my mother and dad both worked, uh, what she did was she came out and met us in the driveway and said, you've got to come in and watch TV. The president has been shot. Um, and I remember vividly, like Marjorie in particular, your comment, being glued to the television yeah. set for four days. And the media coverage at the time, I, the best comment I've, I've, I've ever heard on this is from Fred Friendly, the former CBS News executive. Friendly said that the media, the television coverage in particular, because it was the first time TV had ever done anything like this, the television co coverage kept the nation together. If this had happened today, what would we see differently in the coverage? Well, you'd see about a million times more news trucks yes. and more media people. <laughs> You'd see a lot more women and a lot more people of color. I mean, you look back mm -hmm. now. I mean, everybody mm -hmm. was in their little thin ties, mm -hmm. and it was, it was. You know, they were all men. They were all white men. Except uh, Jackie, uh, right? Mm -hmm. Except except Jackie. That was that was that was very different. But and all the reporters, there were no. Well, women you know, reporters. but you know what was very, very different few. then. Helen I, I think Thomas. that um, <laughs> we in the media are not held in the same high regard now that, that we were then. I mean, mm -hmm. if Walter Cronkite said it, it had to be true. If, 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 if Chet Huntley, David Brinkley said it, it had to be true. They were esteemed news people, and they weren't, um, you know, I mean, it's a little bit now, there's a little airheadedness that have kind of snuck into the, into the media. And you, 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 when you look at the people that you think of on television, that you think of everything they say is true, well, who is that? <laughs> and, and also, it was at a time before when we tended to believe the government and institutions in general because it was 1963. Coming up on Press Party, the 50th anniversary coverage continues really anywhere you look, and not everyone is happy about it. Are you Kennedy'd out? That's next.